Good morning, dear solution cooperators. I will now present my talk, and this is about the Strena for 2022. Do all things through love, nothing through constraint. When you look up the word Strena in the internet from Google, you would immediately see one of these pictures. Of course, you would see the Strena John Bosco from uh, the Rector Major from the website of uh, the Solutions of Don Bosco. But you would also see this. What is Strena, by the way? Strena, it's a noun uh, which uh, means a gift given to relatives, acquaintances, or a firm's gift to clients or employees for the new year. Naturally, this is in the Italian setting. But in the Solution tradition, it comes straight from Don Bosco himself, whereby the rector major, the father of the Salesian family, offers a gift by way of a word or two for the new year. And uh, these days, it is usually an initial comment in a sentence or two, followed up by a commentary traditionally given to the FMA on New Year's Eve. And that is in the general late in Rome. So they're the first to hear it. Then later on, it's uh, disseminated to everybody. Now, how do we? How is it used? It should not be translated as motto or slogan, because that misses the aspect being a New Year's gift original term, as how Don Bosco thought about it. It is also seen by Director Major proposed plan of action for the Salesian family during the coming year, and so. He presents to us, as early as July 2021, the Strena for 20. Uh, we've seen it already. Do all through love, nothing through constraint. And it comes from St. Francis de Sales. Our Rector Major, Father Angel Fernandez Artim, has presented this in view of 2022. And he has reasons why. He presented it as early as July 22, 2021 in Rome. So he said, just six months ago, we gave the daughters of Mary Hubble Christians, as has been our tradition since Don Bosco's time, and the whole Salesian family, the Strena for the New Year, for 2021. And we do remember it because we're still 2021. The theme was moved by hope or is moved by hope. And uh, he continued writing. Six months later, therefore, I have been asked to anticipate what could be the guiding theme for the new year 2022. As the different rhythms of the hemispheres where the Salesian presences are located in demand, maybe for their planning for the next year, maybe for in order to announce it to their young people and uh, to the lay mission partners. Of course, uh, each has uh, a different calendar. And so, our rector major acceded to that demand. And he said, I do so gladly in the hope that it may be of some help. 2022, he pointed out, is the year of the fourth of the anniversary of the death of St. Francis de Sales. That's quite a long time, uh, 1622. And then now we're in 2022. So, he proposes this theme, the spirituality of St. Francis of Sales, the wellspring of Don Bosco's Salesian spirit, which our father and founder drank from and contemplated at all times, especially when it came to defining his style of education, evangelization, to put it in the kind of language, the fledgling Salesian congregation. We will call ourselves Salesians. The question still, for many of our lay mission partners, and even among us Salesians, why do we call ourselves Salesians? Why not Bosconians? And of course, the answer is, St. Francis de Sales was chosen by Don Bosco. Don Bosco was deeply impressed by the extraordinary St. Francis. St. Francis was an authentic inspiration to Don Bosco, especially because he was a true pastor 
a master of charity, a tireless worker for the salvation of souls. Right off, I'd like to tell you this was a question that was raised by one of our uh, lay mission partners here in Don Bosco Kanlubang. Uh, she was asking, I've always wondered why Salishan, also Salishan educators, and you, dear Salishan cooperators, you are Salishans. But the question, why Salishan? One thing is practical, that uh, St. Francis de Sales was a popular saint at the time of Don Bosco. He was in that region of Piedmont. Actually, it was a, a nation, a kingdom before. And then it's very close, since it's very close to the Alps, the place of St. Francis, Annecy, in, uh, and the, all the other surrounding places in France were, were close to the Alps. And so it was that whole, that region. So was, he was very famous at that time, popular. The second thing is that St. Francis was a true pastor. And one who had that zeal pastor of pastoral charity and the, also that characteristic to, to be calm, to be gentle. And he was a tireless worker for the salvation of souls. Now, we do remember as a young seminarian before ordination, John Bosco took this resolution. May the charity and gentleness of St. Francis de Sales guide me all times. And he writes in the memoirs of the orator of uh, St. Francis, Fra Francis de Sales, he writes about this, that uh, the oratory began calling itself by the name of St. Francis de Sales. Look at the title, the memoirs of the oratory of St. Francis de Sales. He named the oratory under this saint. And you look at the year, if you see that uh, picture of the frontispiece from 1815 to 1855, he traces it from his birth, the history of the oratory. Why? Oratory, Don Bosco. And uh, he named it after St. Francis because, he said, we had put our own ministry, which called for great calm and the protection of this saint in the hope that he might obtain for us from God the grace of being able to imitate him in his extraordinary kindness and in winning souls. A very significant uh, a very significant reason that uh, we work with young people, we need calm and meekness, kindness in order to win souls. And St. Francis de Sales was a great patron for that. Now, the Strena for 2020, a wonderful opportunity to recognize and find oneself in the spirituality of St. Francis de Sales. Wonderful opportunity also to appreciate even more the magnificent characteristics of Don Bosco's Salesian spirit and the precious values of Salesian youth spirituality. And so, to see ourselves reflected in this and feel called today to be more Salesian in our Salesian family, more filled with the spirit of Saint, a spirit that permeates Salesianity as the family of Don Bosco. It would be a shame that we call ourselves Salesian, and yet we do not know who St. Francis de Sales is. Now, knowing him, we will be more Salesian. There was a, a quip by uh, Father Morandir, an expert in Salesianity, especially in St. Francis de Sales. He is a Frenchman, and uh, he gave us uh, these retreats in these two places. Uh, in this uh, in these places of Saint Francis de Sales in in Annecy particularly, and then the places where where he had this apostolate, where he lived, where he died, and uh, he was telling us, uh, usually the Salesians do not know Saint Francis de Sales that well, and the uh, normal Salesians, he said. Now I bring to you more of Saint Francis, and then you would know him more. Then you'll be less normal Salesian. But the point is driven. We should know St. Francis de Sales. So, belonging completely, living to the full, our presence in the world. These are, this is a thought from St. Francis de Sales. Completely to God, living to the full, our presence in the world. And it's very true for all of us, but more so, I think, for, for you, dear Salesian cooperators. 
And uh, this is probably the most revolutionary proposal of Francis de Sales to be holy in the world. And Pope Benedict XVI writes about that when he talks about St. Francis de Sales. Addressing, uh, St. Francis de Sales addresses to Christians is to belong completely to God, living to the full our presence in the world and the tasks proper to our state, that state of life. Whatever state of life you are in, whether you are uh, you are a priest, okay, or a member of the clergy, and then whatever state of life uh, you in uh, in the world, living in the world. Of course, now we do not distinguish that anymore. But uh, every walk of life, whatever your job is, whatever vocation God calls you. In fact, he writes about this in his work. An Introduction to the Devout Life, which I have read as a novice way back in 1992-1993. And he wrote in the preface, My intention is to teach those who are living in towns, the conjugal state, at court, whoever, whatever state of life you are in, you are called to devotion, you are called to holiness. And blessed Pope Pius IX proclaimed Francis Doctor of the Church, Pius IX also the the Pope of Don Bosco, the Bosco was, uh, uh, began his uh, ministry, and uh, even until the death of Pope Pius IX, they were friends. So he would insist on this broadening of the call to perfection, to holiness. And he said, true piety shone its light everywhere and gained entrance to the thrones of kings, the tents of generals, the courts of judges, custom, custom houses, workshops even the huts of herdsmen. And the St. Francis Sales is Vatican also because this is what Vatican II was talking about. So the spirituality of our time and the Vatican II, an appeal to lay people, lay people, not only the clergy, a care for the consecration of temporal things, education of daily life, harmony between prayer and action world. Between the search for perfection and the secular condition, with the help of God's grace that permeates the human being and without destroying him, purifies him, raising him to divine heights. See, that is the call for everybody. Now, the source of this kind of spirituality, okay, uh, of course, uh, we hear it from St. Francis de Sales, also is in so many of our deeds and words of our Lord from the gospel. This is what he teaches. Then also in the simplicity of Don Bosco's proposal to his voice, that good night talk that struck St. Dominic Savio. Everyone is to holiness. Everyone is called to be a saint. And then in the language and the ecclesial context of the 19th century. It's the milieu of Don Bosco. So how can be not be attentive so that it may also be a source of inspiration and the pastoral and spiritual proposal for our day. And this is the first question that you could share on when you gather together as groups after this talk. How can we not be attentive so that it may also be a source of inspiration and a pastoral and spiritual proposal for our day? How do I become holy? Or how do I follow that path of holiness? We are called and fired by the words of, of St. Francis de Sales himself. Another thing is the centrality of the heart. So first, during his formation in Paris, uh, he studied in Paris as young, Francis de Sales. What triggered his conversion was an in-depth reading of the Song of under the guidance of a Benedictine priest. The book Song of Songs, it's a story of intimacy. And it reflects the intimacy between the, the one who the between the one who is loved, the beloved, the one who loves. And the, therefore it's a reflection of one's relationship with God. So for Francis, it was a light that colored his whole perception of both God, human life, 
both his individual journey and his relationship with so, this is the congregation the order founded by saint francis de sales the visitation nuns the visitant deans as uh, how they are also called and this is the symbol the heart as the most telling sign of his human and spiritual heritage a heart pierced by two arrows see that love of God and love of neighbor. And actually, he was writing two treatises on this. They condense all his thinking and teaching. So the first one is Treatise on the Love of God. So the fruit of his patient work in the formation of the first group of the visitant deans. And these are conferences edited and re-edited in book form. And so you could get a copy of these, okay, of these works of St. Francis de Sales. And this one, Treatise on the Love of God. It's quite lengthy, but very interesting. And it, it, it would really help us in our spiritual life. So this first also, Treatise on the Love of God, this was the basis of the formation of Mary Margaret Alacoque, who 51 years after the death of Francis received revelations, which opened the way to devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus in the church. She was a vision. So she was a spiritual daughter of Francis because she was a visitation nun. Now, the second one, only the index went to the other treaties. Love of neighbor. Why? Because uh, Francis died before even uh, before finishing it or before uh, writing on it no, substantially. And uh, he died on 28th December in 1622 at the age of 55. So. Uh, next year, on huh? 28th December, that's 400 years after the death of St. Francis. Now, let's relate it to Don Bosco. The humanism of Francis, desire and ability to enter into dialogue with everybody, that great value he placed on friendship, so important for personal accompaniment in the way Don Bosco would interpret it. Everything is built on the solid foundations of the heart, just as Francis lived it. There. It's uh, something that we talk about a lot as solutions, especially these past two general chapters, 27 and 28. Personal accompaniment. And this we emphasize. Thank you, dear Sir Salesian Cooperation. Can you accompany in this state of life that you have, especially young people, especially who need our help? Now, there's another section in this uh, introductory letter or this uh, introduction to the Strena by Director Major between providence and loving kindness. So we have the providence of God and then loving kindness. Now, there are two reflections of his way of feeling God's heart and opening his heart to his brothers and sisters, intimately related to one another. The sense of providence and then the way of approaching interacting with each person or his proverbial gentleness or loving kindness. Francis de Sales was famous for this gentleness and loving kindness. But his character naturally was choleric, gets angry. No? Choleric persons get angry immediately. But he worked on that such that at the end, People would be asking, oh, do you not get angry? You're so gentle. And that loving kindness, this is another reason why Don Bosco took him as the patron saint. We need this gentleness, loving kindness. It's part of the pillars of the system of education of St. John Bosco, the preventive system. The reason, religion, and loving kindness. Now, about providence, okay? Trust in, the, in providence has roots that come from his formation in Paris, Padua. He studied in this. So, that holy indifference, so to say. And what is this? I trust God's heart unreservedly. This disposes me to embrace whatever the sequence of events and circumstances presents me with day by day. I have nothing to ask and nothing to refuse. 
with respect to what I know is in God's hands in every situation. That's why one of the mottos that we, we can have no, as uh, followers of St. Francis de Sales is ask nothing, refuse nothing. So it's in this context. I have nothing more to ask from the Lord. I have nothing to refuse. Also, gentleness of heart when dealing once with one's neighbor, even when that neighbor is unfriendly or anything but pleasant as a character. It's a reflection of the same trust. Before, it is a simple trait. This time, trust in the human heart, always open to God's action and always destined for the fullness of life. So he's open what God would want him to do. And then opening ourselves to a full life. So gentleness and loving kindness are missionary approaches aimed at facilitating as much as possible every circumstance, this encounter between grace and freedom in the hearts of those before me. It is not then just a question of good manners. It's not just to be nice. But in fact, they come from the heart. Encounter between grace and freedom. So you see them as, here, hearts. You see them as human persons. And because of that, Jesus loves them. You also love them. Find here a famous saying of St. Francis de Sales. I'd like to read the original French so that at least you can hear something from the original uh, words of St. Francis, how he wrote them. And uh, let me try my French. Okay. On attire plus les mouches avec une cuillère de miel qu'avec cent baril de vinaigre. Il faut tout faire par amour, rien par force. It's translated as a spoonful of honey, acts flies than a barrel full of vinegar. For to fair par amour, rien par force. Do all through, through love, nothing through constraint. And this is the strena for 2022. Now, let's go to Don Bosco. If we think of the way in which Don Bosco reinterpreted this loving kindness in his educational system, we understand how profound are the motivations which it is not just at, as it was for St. Francis de Sales. So that parallel, loving kindness in the person of St. Francis de Sales and in Don Bosco, he put it into his educational system. Now another that was uh, placed in, the, in this introductory letter the major is something about the mission. In fact, he calls it the tirocinio that practical training in the mission at the Chablais and how it is related to the Damihi animas. You might be wondering, why is there this picture? The wolves, wolves uh, in, at winter time. So these are not grigio, do not signify the, the, our mascot, the wolves, no? since we had grigio, but these are wolves. Pack of wolves, the woods at the uh, winter time. Just to tell you about this, what happened, the uh, two instances that happened. Probably. So Francis was known for his calm and sweet demeanor, yes. And then one day, a Protestant upped him as he went out of the church after the Mass. And then he, he, the Protestant would say, if I give you a slap, will you turn the other cheek for me to give you another? This was one of calm and then kindness. And this was in the, in the Chablis. Another one is this. That's, that's why I put there the picture of the wolves in winter. So he sometimes had had bad encounters and he risked his life on the woods that was frequented by wolves. One evening, he had to take refuge on the branches of a large chestnut to spend the night there waiting for help. Now, with his belt, tied himself to a branch for fear of falling from the tree as he slept. So spending the night there, those are among his, this was among the ordeals that he had. So there behind me you know, is a picture of the church there in 
in Chablais in, at Tonon. Okay? So the tough experience of the evangelization in Chablais between 1593 and 1596. So beginning with that address as provost that was a rank in the church before, and then 1596, Christmas Masses at Tonong, is where the mission set the concrete tone for his whole life. This really moved him. This affected him. And it was extremely difficult. Here, he said, here everyone has insults on their lips and stones in their hands. What's this priest doing here? So it was a crisis. It was a crisis that brought growth and transformed the missionary in the first place, even before it did so for his beneficiaries. Also very interesting to read those years at Chable as Eucharistic pedagogy. So the visible Eucharist, celebrated with a large crowd, carried in procession, and after years of emptiness, for doing, that, for doing that procession with the Eucharist, that became the point of arrival. After going through a long desert, he was the one who lived from the Eucharist and became its presence in a hidden way among the people who were previously hostile and whom he approached and made friends with one by one. Bearing in mind that our Salesian presences are, for the most part, among non-Catholics, this is very important. The Eucharistic spirituality becomes prophetic. For at the time of, France, uh, of St. Francis de Sales, he was alone and then he brought the Eucharist and then they became friends with him. Is, it, is uh, this not the case? That there are a lot who do not believe. Of course, in the Philippines, we have a different setting. But in the other places where we have Salesians, Okay, uh, there are not so many Catholics. So is this something prophetic that we do the Eucharist, we celebrate the Eucharist, and then it touches those who are outside of us? I mean, I have a reflection now, at the time of the pandemic, especially, we're still in the time of the pandemic, but the Eucharist, um, the Sunday obligation has been relaxed in, in uh, most of the places. But then we celebrate the Eucharist. And through also online, okay, we're able to reach a lot. Is this not something like the time of St. Francis de Sales? So to those whom it is sent without renouncing explicit proclamation, but knowing how to wait for God's long time and not waiting for the faithful to fill the church, but mixing with the flock wherever and however it may be, that we go to them the mean, in the means that we are able to do. And with the Eucharist, of course, wavelength for Francis de Sales is the centrality of the cross and presence in Mary. In fact, his vocation, conversion, was the cross. When the scabbard and the cross, when he fell down from the horse, his sword and his scabbard formed the cross. And that happened twice. And he took that as a sign. Now, of course, we do know that in Don Bosco, this is something that we breathe, live with. All this speaks to us of the educative and evangelizing passion of Don Bosco, who, in the presence of the Lord in the Eucharist, and the strong presence of Mary in the life of the oratory, in the midst of his boys, found the daily strength to realize the damihi animas, cetera tolle. Another point, interesting one. That a question that Director Major poses to us. How do we communicate communication? It's so good that your that your provincial coordinator or president okay, of the of your council uh, is an expert in communication. Meldi, I thank her also for inviting me to deliver this talk. And uh, it's so significant that uh, you have her as your leader among the cooperators here in the Philippines, and that she's one who is uh, who has this as a special place in her heart, social communication. And uh, she was she's a journalist, and 
St. Francis de Sales is the patron of journalists. So let's look at his resume, St. Francis. So he's the patron saint of journalists, of writers, deaf, among many others. Deaf. You know, there's an interesting anecdote. St. Francis developed a sign language in order to teach a deaf man about God. So this he is patron. But look at his resume. Writer, preacher, missionary, catechist, preacher, theologian, mystic, debater in the defense of the Catholic faith. And you know what? Why is he patron of the journalist? He wrote pamphlets. And he put them at the houses, at the doorstep of each of the... He slid them under the doors. And then that's how he evangelized. Not with big... Uh, with big works of uh, like what we could have now, okay, the even the traditional media, the but in his own way, evangelizing through print. So this is his charism as a community. Now there's a splendid agreement between love and interest in reflection, culture, and humanism. And that charism as a communicator is shared. It's a gift of God. Primarily to Saint Saint Francis de Sales, and also for other people, and you know, here are the most beautiful expressions that it be promoted, encouraged, harmonized by creating and fostering dialogue between those who are more capable and richer in these fields. So those who are gifted, the journalists, those who are into communication, social communication, in the Philippines North, our the one who is now the head of the Commission on Social Communication is Father Doni. And so this is a work, this is a solution work, not only of, about Don Bosco, but Francis de Sales. If we are solution, there should be those of us who are rich in this field. And then second, in the wide sense, Francis as a master of communication for everyone, he is a model for all of us, a great disseminator given the means and circumstances in which he lived. What is our circumstance now? Our circumstance now is that we have social media, that each one can communicate. You can even have your own blog. You have your own wall if you're into Facebook. You can post your pictures on Instagram. You can tweet through Twitter. And some of you, I think, would have TikTok uh, accounts. These are means to communicate. And so it's for everyone. We have St. Francis de Sales as patron also. It is enough to think of the enormous number of letters from his apostolate as bishops. He wrote a lot of them. That's how he communicated. He's a man of communication. Another question I'd like to pose to you, you know, besides the first one, how do, we, how do you become holy in that universal call of holiness that was uh, presented by St. Francis Sales. The second one is, how do I communicate? How do I, how does St. Francis Sales inspire me in communicating? Then, how about St. John Bosco? You see here one manuscript. He wrote volumes. So, we have a disciple, Don Bosco, full of St. Francis de Sales, who followed his master's zeal. With the new means at his disposal, the popular mass press. You see, 318 published works of Don Bosco in 40 years. That's an average of about, of about one every two months. He was that prolific. And in fact, St. Francis of Sales is the patron saint of writers, and St. John Bosco is the patron of publishers. At the same time, a message for us is the utmost relevance, the real challenge in today's world, where communication is the center of reality. So communication, we cannot live without communication. If we're disconnected, then there's a lot that we're missing. I am the, uh, the delegate for Don Bosco, for the cooperators here in Don Bosco Kandubang, as well as the one who leads the district. And we do have common formations, okay? We have begun it. We will uh, continue with it. 
uh, the different uh, chapters here. But uh, this is something that we, we communicate. Even with the group chat, we have our own, uh, our own Facebook page and so on. Following St. Francis and Don Bosco. Now, finally, Francis de Sales in Don Bosco's way of accompanying the young people that charisms flourish and bear fruit in each other. So the true communion of within the educational and spiritual art of Don Bosco did not come from nothing, but was nourished by deep the work of the spirit in the history of the church that preceded him. So we see a lot in, in uh, St. Francis' sales and in Don Bosco, but it's a long-standing tradition. Of course, from the time of the Jesus and then the apostles, the early church, and now the Middle Ages, and now these uh, saints of the Renaissance period, okay, and they take their roots from, from uh, this, this uh, work of the Spirit. Now, an addition nor a, nor a repetition, it's rather a new flourishing and bearing of fruit that feeds on the work of the Spirit that vivified the church with Francis of Assisi, Ignatius, and then Dominic, and then Teresa of Avila, the great founders. So along with them, we have St. Francis, and then later, St. John Bosco. Now, Here's the proposal for the church today, especially for the Salesian family of Don Bosco, growing in the art of accompanying the journey of faith, especially of so many boys, girls, young men of the world who do not know God and who at the same time hunger and thirst for him, often without knowing it. Don't say that, Father, here they're all believed. Look into the apostolate that you're doing. Look at the young people whom you encounter. They believe in God or maybe if they believe in God somewhere out there that does not who does not have anything to do with their lives and yet these young people are those hunger and thirst for him and so it's very quote unquote solution to feel and truly believe that each person needs friend of the soul in whom to find advice help guidance and friendship this is something that we look at uh, in our time Actually, after the two general chapters, accompanying young people, especially vocational accompaniment, when they're already in formation, but the Salesian cooperators, how do you accompany? If you accompany, it's very Salesian. They need, the young people need a friend of the soul. Them. And Director Major caps his letter with this, with the words from Pope Benedict, Pope Emeritus, because he wrote something about Francis de Sales. And this is this. Dear brothers and sisters, in an age such as ours that seeks freedom, even with violence and unrest, the timeliness of this great teacher of spirituality and peace who gave his followers the freedom, the spirit of freedom, the true spirit. St. Francis de Sales is an exemplary witness of Christian humanism with his familiar style, with words which at times have a poetic touch. He reminds us that human beings have planted in their inner, innermost depths the longing for God and that in him alone can they find true joy and the most complete fulfillment. Underscore certain things here. Exemplary witness of Christian humanism. Philosophy also of St. John Bosco. St. Francis and Bosco, that Christian humanism, putting the human being at the at an important at an important uh, and working, of course, collaborating with God in helping him in the, from the point of view of St. John Bosco, educating him, evangelizing. This is something that we can learn from St. Francis de Sales 
and St. John Bosco. Uh, thank you for once again for listening. I do hope to be able to get more. In fact, it's since it's the year of St. Francis de Sales, why not have a retreat later on during that year about St. Francis de Sales? He can teach us a lot of things. You know, I had that retreat, one week retreat, places of St. Francis. We can do something, something virtual or, or a retreat that reflects those places where he was in. That's a suggestion of as of now, since you're doing this retreat, and it's right that you begin it by reflecting on the strena, I give you those three questions. First, how do you become holy in the challenge towards universal holiness by St. Francis de Sales, by Pope Pius IX, by Vatican II? Second, how do I communicate in this time when communication really matters. Third, how do I accompany people and the other people are the, the subjects of our, or who are there at our mission to the young people and other people to God sends us. So how do I accompany them? God bless